about innovation and industrialization today. And at the end of this talk, I'm going to ask you whether you also could imagine that this is the future of Greece. Now, if you hear the term industrialization, it might come to your mind that we are talking about uh, old factories with uh, smoking chimneys like this one. But uh, believe me, this is last year. I'm going to talk about Industry 4.0, the fourth industrial revolution. And um, I will kind of try to explain to you what this got to do with Greece. First of all, what is Industry 4.0? It's smart factories instead of factories with chimneys, driven and organized by smart logistics, smart mobility, smart buildings, smart grids, and smart products. So it's not anymore the factory which is in the focus. It's the information technology which is driving industry 4.0, and then the knowledge of people who create this information technology. So it's more about people industry 4.0 than about factories. Now you may ask again, what has this got to do with Greece? Well, I believe grabbing somewhere there where Alex Papachilas stopped. I believe that this is maybe not the only way out of this crisis for Greece, but maybe it's the one way which will increase your incomes most, and maybe also your profits most. Now, talking about incomes, if you look on GDP per capita, this is something like roughly the average income per person in a country, you will see that we don't always have to take Germany as an example. You will see that the Western European countries like Belgium, Finland, the Netherlands, they have these increasing incomes on a very high level. And you see maybe the small kink uh, after the crisis, but I can promise you the income there will go on on these high levels. If you look now on Greece, what can you see there? You see this huge gap between Greece and these countries. And the awful thing is, in the last five years, this gap increased. Now, the question is, of course, why is that so? And there are two reasons to be explained. The one reason, I hear this every time, I heard it yesterday again, and serious Greek people are telling me this, and they put this really philosophical face and tell me, you know, Germany. They don't want us to get as rich as them. They don't want us to compete them out. You know, these Germans, they have an open bill. Well, okay. Every time I hear this, I really ask myself, are you really serious? Do you believe Germany is really afraid of being competed out by Greece when China is with 1.3 million people is standing out there? And why Greece? Of course, Alex said, Greece is the center of the world, that's true, yeah. But what is somewhat closer to Germany are countries like Estonia and Poland and Latvia. And if you look at them, they do better. They are even coming close to Greece. Estonia is as good as Greece now. And I can tell you one thing. You see Poland getting closer to Greece in five years. If Greece will go on like this in the last five years, Poland will also outperform Greece because what I'm going to tell you now is something they are already doing. So maybe there's a second explanation. And I have to torture you a little bit with figures. I give you four figures. The first one is this. We all know that high value added comes from manufacturing. If you want to have good exports, you need a good manufacturing. And if you look at Germany or Finland, you see most GDP is developed, is done in, in manufacturing. In Greece, it's not. Greece is specialized in agriculture and hotels, tourism, which is fine. But if you look more deeply into manufacturing, what will you see? What is Greece manufacturing? It's food, beverages, and cigarettes. And you really have to export a lot of cigarettes to get in one Mercedes. So, figure number two. If you want to be good in exports, you need a kind of sized businesses. If you look in Germany or Finland, you will see in the manufacturing service, 
the majority of people are working in businesses with 50 or even more than 250 people. The majority of people in Greece are working in companies with less than 10 people. So you cannot expect much export from that. And then there's this other thing. New ideas, constant change, constant innovation. That doesn't fall from heaven. It's a matter of investment in R&D. And one night in Brussels around 2007, they said we should define a rule of thumb. And this is, maybe you should invest like 3% into R&D. And that is what the other countries are doing. Sweden, United States. Germany then spent only in 2007 2.5% into, into R&D. And what they did in these last six years, they increased their expenditures to 3%. Only Greece is spending 0.67% into R&D, while Israel at the same day today is spending 5%. At least there's one, one figure where Greece is first. Torturing your businesses. <laughs> the ease of doing business index says that Greece is on place 72, meaning that the everyday exchange with bureaucracy takes a lot of your time. Businesses who want to be really innovative go to the United States or Singapore where they are supportive. So, it might not be for Merkel or Herr Schäuble who put this torture on Greece. It may be something within the country. I'm not sure, but maybe. I said in the beginning I talk about industrialization, and there are two ways of industrialization, and the one is focus on innovation systems. Why? I give you a quote which creates a kind of a picture, hopefully. Just over 100 years ago, Scientific American reported that economic progress in Manhattan was near an end. Why? Because the island could support only a limited number of horses. In the long run, economic growth comes not from cramming more horses or more tourists onto your islands or more factories into your rust belt or even more information onto your service, but from technological breakthroughs. Not from more of the same, but from the new and the previously unthinkable. And what is telling you this picture? It tells you, you cannot plan the next industrial product which you can produce, but you can increase the probability that it will happen in your country when you create an innovation system which works. And what is that? What is an innovation system? What is an upfront innovation system? It's nothing less than creating a full innovation chain. We heard before from Michalis uh, about basic research. I don't have to tell you anymore. It's just the abstract way of excellent research. But you need to connect this. You need to connect this with applied research in, done in the very same area, creating invention out of these abstract ideas, getting it closer to innovation. And if you, if you have this area of basic and applied research really in the same location, what you will see, and if you allow them to do so, what you will see is you will see startups will show up and grab these ideas and make money out of it, creating new products. And as venture capital likes this chain, they also will show up. And now comes something which is really important. You need a bureaucracy which is helpful, which supports startups, by, for instance, protecting their ideas, which gives venture capital something like a safe investment environment. And if they do so, you will see some of these new startups will become the future industry. They will grow tremendously, like gazelles. Not many, maybe two out of 100, but that is fine. What you also need is, however, you need exchange between all these areas. You need exchange between the area of research and the, exchange and the area of business. You need corporations, networks. You need people talking to each other, cooperating with each other, and doing something together out of it. And what you least, last but not least, if you want to fulfill all parts of this innovation chain, because entrepreneurs are not always the best managers, you need a trained management who is able to put new products into markets. Now, where stands Greece here? Well, there is this wall, this wall of bureaucracy. 
And this wall really hampers businesses to grow, as in other countries. And the best managers, they don't like to speak every day to a bureaucrat. They just leave the country because they say, in other countries, I can do what I do know best, namely not speaking to bureaucrats, but creating new products for the markets. And also, venture capital usually leaves. Why? Because they want to get the return on the investment all for themselves and not shared with the bureaucrats. And entrepreneurs, in particular, in particular the innovative ones, they leave as well. And as they are not asking for support from applied research, there simply is no applied research. So this is the picture of Greece from my point of view. And if you don't believe me, just look at this figure. Greece, very last in the ease of doing business ranking and in the innovation performance index on the very lowest place when you compare it with other countries in the Eurozone. But let us finish with the bad news. Let's come to the good news. The good news is you do not have to build up this innovation system from the scratch. And I can, I can assure you this wouldn't be possible. There are some hidden assets. The first one is there is a number of really excellent basic research institutes here in Greece. I don't know how many of you know this, but they are really doing excellent research. What is even more unbelievable is there are so many excellent Greek researchers. Yanis Ioannidis from Stanford University just counted them, and what he found out is while Greek among the whole population is of over the world is 0.2%, the top Greek researchers among all research is more than 3%, so more than 15 times in relation to the population. The only problem, 85% are working in the diaspora. I also know that here in Athens, you have started to create something like a new, vibrant startup scene, which is good. You started to cooperate with each other, and this is a good, good uh, starting point for creating an innovation system. And there is also a great number of innovative entrepreneurs. Some of them remained here. Most of them are, again, thinking about leaving Greece. And then there's the fifth, the fifth hidden asset. And I heard that yesterday again from so many foreigners. It's such a fantastic quality of life here. So why don't you just try, instead of only bringing 20 million tourists into your islands, why don't you just try as well and bring 2,000 top researchers into Greece? Because also researchers like good life outside of their, of, of their laboratories. And when they are back in Stockholm, where six months they don't see any sun, they would be really happy to work here if you give them the right perspective. Now, why top scientists? Well, very simple. They are those who are most likely to make breakthrough discoveries. Those which we, you can turn later on to the next industrial activity. So, give Greek scientists in the diaspora an incentive to at least partly come back. People who are in Harvard, they won't come back all time to Athens. But if you give them an incentive to at least come partly back to Athens, you will something, create something like brain circulation. They will have maybe their groups here working with them as well and supporting them in creating innov innovative activities in Greece. How can you do this? Pay them better, give them attractive working conditions. Now, in a nutshell, what has to be done? This wall, this wall has to be torn down. Bureaucracy has to become helpful. And if you do not believe that this is possible, a couple of Eastern European countries just did that, so it is possible. Secondly, strong investments have to be done into applied research. Where there is one basic research center now, you have to group another nine research centers around them, doing the exact same research in the same research areas, allowing exchange between them. And if you do that, I promise you, and if you allow them to do so, I promise you a lot of high-tech startups will show up and be there, like bees, grabbing ideas and making products out of it. And I can also tell you, venture capital, which is now in Switzerland or in England or even outside of the euro, they will come back as well. 
but what you need most for that. All this chain will not work if one thing does not happen. You need to allow this exchange between the research world and the world of business. Most importantly, a person who is a researcher and has a good idea today how to make a product out of it should become tomorrow a business owner, a high-tech startup, create this business, grow it, and if or she, he or she is after three years tired of being a business owner, be able again to become a researcher. As far as I know, this is currently a taboo here in Greece. And the question is, how can you break taboos? Any idea? Just break them. Just break them. And if you don't know how to do this, get the Greek diaspora people in. They know this from their everyday experience. Now, you may come up, I could at least imagine hearing you telling me that where should come the money from to invest into these, into these uh, research centers? Well, I can tell you two things. Number one, in Europe, up in Brussels, innovation is in the center of the next programming period. They have ready there the money to be invested in exactly these kind of research centers. So if politicians in Greece should start combining these EU funds and should also start reallocating tax money, your tax money, which is currently used for consumption, if they reallocate it to investment, then you can create an innovation strategy which is helpful for Greece. Now I'll tell you a side story. There's this Teaming for Excellence program, for instance, in, in, in Brussels. And a German politician said, when there was the discussion, who should get eligible for that? A German politician, so more or less from Merkel, said Greece should also get eligible for this. And guess what happened? The Greek representatives, when it was to be decided whether Greece should get access to these funds, just, just didn't show up and asked, you can read this in the newspapers, asked why, they said, look, we don't need this money, we are too good to that. <laughs> so what is telling us this story? It tells us that they don't know that you want this. I also don't know whether you want this, I can't hear you whether you want this. It means, in the other words, that if you really want this kind of innovation system work like this, you have to start to lobby for it. You have to create your lobby. You have to found your lobby, which is your voice. This is part of every modern democracy. Your voice, every day on the politicians, to tell them, start doing this kind of innovation system, start doing this kind of investments into the future of Greece. If you start to do this, then you can change it. You cannot sit just waiting that the politicians will do this. It's up on you to do that. Why? If you want to become part of Industry 4.0, you really need to have to have a vision for Greece. Greece needs to become up in this innovation ladder. This is where Greece should go, and this is something, a vision which you could share and talk to your politicians with. So, lobby up, start tomorrow, and go to the politicians and tell them what to do. Thank you very much. <laughs>